Hi everybody, it's another edition of Miss Carrie Recommends. So today, we will be talking about a couple of my favorite spooky chapter books for this October. So the first book I'm going to talk to you about today is Coraline by Neil Gaiman. And it also has a movie too. I highly recommend both. I recommend this book for maybe kids 10 and up because it can be a little bit scary for really little kids. Um, but this book is about a little girl named Coraline and she's just moved into this house. Well, excuse me, it's an apartment building. It's a house that's been divided into apartments. So she's moved there with her mother and father and she's getting used to new things and new neighbors. And one day she finds this tiny door and she asked her mother to unlock it. So when mama unlocks it, guess what she finds? A bricked up wall. But later, when she goes back to check the door, she opens it and it goes to a whole nother world. And in the new world, she finds she has a different mother and a different father. They look like her parents, but they're not exactly like her parents. Because guess what? They have buttons for eyes. So I'm going to read you the first few pages, so it'll give you a little taste of Coraline. This book also has some neat illustrations, like here's Coraline with the black cat. I love black cats. So, first few pages of Coraline. And check out this picture, it's a big mouse. Ooh. Coraline discovered the door a little while after they moved into the house. It was a very old house. It had an attic under the roof and a cellar under the ground, and an overgrown garden with huge old trees in it. Coraline's family didn't own all of the house. It was too big for that. Instead, they owned a part of it. There were other people who lived in the old house. Miss Spink and Miss Forcible lived in the flat below Coraline's on the ground floor. Flat is a British word for apartment. They were both old and round, and they lived in a flat with a number of aging Highland Terriers, who had names like Hamish and Andrew and Junk. Once upon a time, Miss Spink and Miss Forcible had been actresses, as Miss Spink told Caroline the first time she met her. You see, Caroline, Miss Spink said, getting Coraline's name wrong. Both myself and Miss Forcible were famous actresses in our time. We dropped the boards, Livy. Oh, don't let Hamish eat the fruitcake or he'll be up all night with his tummy. It's Coraline, not Caroline. Coraline, said Coraline. And in the flat above Coraline's under the roof was a crazy old man with a big mustache. He told Coraline that he was training a mouse circus. He wouldn't let anyone see it. One day, little Caroline, when they are all ready, everyone in the whole wide world will see the wonders of my mouse circus. You ask me why you cannot see it now? Is that what you asked me? No, said Coraline quickly. I asked you not to call me Caroline. It's Coraline. The reason you cannot see the mouse circus, said the man upstairs, is that the mice are not yet ready and rehearsed. Also, they refuse to play the songs I have written for them. All the songs I have written for the mice to play go oompa, oompa. But the white mice will only play toodle like that. I am thinking of trying them on a different type of cheese. Coraline didn't think there really was a mouse circus. Mouse circus. She thought the old man was making it up. The day after they moved in, Coraline went exploring. So, she, and one day it was raining, so she counted everything in the house. She counted everything blue, 153. She counted the windows, 21. She counted the doors, 14. Of the doors that she found, 13 open and closed. The other, the big carved brown wooden door at the far corner of the drawing room was locked. She said to her mother, where does that door go? Nowhere, dear. It has to go somewhere. Her mother shook her head. Look, she told Coraline. She reached up and took a string of keys from the top of the kitchen door frame. 
She sorted through them carefully and selected the oldest and biggest, blackest, rustiest key. They went into the drawing room. She unlocked the door with the key. The door swung open. Her mother was right. The door didn't go anywhere. It opened onto a brick wall. So that's what she thinks, but I've already told you that that's not what happens. So, if that sounded interesting to you, we have this book to check out at the library. And we also have the movie. And I'm going to show you a couple of other books that you might like if you like spooky books. So this one is called The Old Willis Place. And it's a ghost story, too, by Mary Downing Hahn. And it's really cool. I like that cover, too. And, of course, the one of the most popular spooky books are the Goosebump series by Oral Stein. And we've got lots of these. This particular one is called The Girl Who Cried Monster. So, I'm going to read the synopsis to you, the, the summary. Lucy likes to tell monster stories to her, and her friends and family are sick of it. Then one day, Lucy discovers a real-life monster, the librarian in charge of the summer reading program. So that would be like Miss Carrie. Too bad Lucy's told so many monster tall tales. Too bad no one believes a word she says. Too bad the monster knows who she is and is coming after her next. So if those sound interesting to you, stop by the library and see us and we will help you find these. So I hope you enjoyed our recommendations today, and I will see you next time, guys. Bye-bye.